Hello and welcome to this very first episode of the APL quest where we go through one problem every week uh, from a past APL problem solving competitions uh, phase one. Have a look at APL wiki for the details. Today's problem is the first problem from 2013 where we are asked to write a defin to generate odd numbers. Let's start by generating some numbers. Let's say we want to generate the first 10 numbers. Problem here is that these are all the adjacent integers. So we multiply by 2, getting us every other number, and then we can offset it by 1. For example, we can take a 1 and subtract it. So we're swapping the arguments on the minus. So, uh, there are other alternatives. We could as well uh, add negative 1 to this, or we could parenthesize it. And for this we can build our defen. Oops, that's the argument name omega, and we can try it, and there we go. Now, as you can see, uh, by default, APL starts counting from 1. A lot of people, computer scientists especially, some mathematicians, prefer starting, starting counting from 0 instead. And APL allows you to choose that. So we can set the index origin to 0, and now um, we count from 0 instead. This has upsides and downsides. Uh, upside, of course, is you can choose whatever fits your, your problem and your comfort. Downside is that if you share code with others, you need to make sure you get the right index origin. You might need to set it yourself. And so it's a classic problem to uh, try to write code that works with any index origin. And we can see that if we now uh, try to apply our function, it gives an entirely wrong result. So that's no good. The corresponding function for index origin 0, instead of subtracting 1, would be to add 1. There are other ways of generating uh, this. Um, yes, the problem asked for a defin, but we can also write uh, tested functions in APL. So here's another approach. Let's start by uh, writing the framework for a tested function. So we put some parentheses here, um, and then we can do two times, and not the name of the argument, but rather the identity um, of the argument. So it's an identity function, um, and we can get 20 there. Then we can use this to reshape a bunch of zeros and ones. So this is 0, 1, reshape. We swap the arguments on the reshape, so the shape on the right, and the content on the left. Um, and now the only thing we miss is asking for the indices where there we have the true values, or the ones. So the where function and uh, there we go. This was index origin 0. Now let's switch back to index origin 1. Um, and of course, this won't work anymore. Um, rather, we just have to flip the 1s and the zeros. And there we go. OK, and that's all very nice. But how about if we wanted to write a function that could work with either setting of quad.io? the index origin. And there are various uh, approaches to that. Um, here are some cool ones that came up in the live event. Let's say we start by multiplying the argument by 2 uh, and then generating those um, integers. And now we take the parity of that, so that's the um, two residue or modulus two of that. And now we ask for where we have the ones. Okay, that's good. Now what happens if we change uh, to quadio zero? Okay, so this part up here 
gives it di starts off differently and then when we ask for the parity we get the opposite but that's exactly what we want when we're using quadio zero which means if we ask where are the ones we get the right result so we can see that this function works with either um, either origin let's give it a name argument goes here and really what's happening is the the iota, the index generator, and the iota underbar, the where function, are cancelling each other out. So, quadio uh, gets 1, and this works, and quadio gets 0, and it still works. So that's a really clever solution um, for writing it in a way that doesn't matter which index origin you're using. Now the reason we're bumping into this is because we're dealing with indices at all. We have the index generator, we have the where function, which is the indices of the true values, but we could also go about this in a very different way, in a mathematical um, way. So if we observe that we start with a 1 and then we uh, increase with 2 every time, that gives it, that's an interesting property. So let's say like this, let's take, we use an overtake here, we are taking the first 10 elements uh, of a 1. Now, there aren't 10 elements in the 1, so APL will pad with appropriate fill elements, which are zeros. We can subtract this from 2. And notice here that we have the beginning element, the 1, and then the offset to the next number over and over. Which means if we ask for the cumulative sum, or the plus scan of that, we get all the odd numbers. And since we didn't use any index-related uh, functionality, then uh, there is no influence from the index origin. So we can put this into a function as well. Argument goes here, and we can try it. f10 and quadri1, f10, there we go. Um, now let's say we wanted to go back to our original formulation where we started off with um, two times the integers, the indices. So in one case we wanted to subtract one, that's when quadio is one, and in the other case we want to add one, that's in the case when quadio is zero. So how could we adjust this? Of course both the subtraction and addition can be seen as an, an addition you just need to either add negative 1 or you need to add 1. So that means if quadio is 1 then we want to subtract 1 and if quadio is 0 then we need to add 1. And we can map this in a mathematical way. So we have either a a 0 or a 1 and if we take negative 1 and we raise it to the power of those two then for the 0 we get 1 and for 1 we get negative 1 which is exactly what we want so now we can write our function as negative 1 raised to the power of the quad IO and this will just take whatever global quad IO is currently in effect and we add that to twice the indices so now we can try, this was quadio1 and quadio0, and it still works. Let me show you another very clever solution. It is as follows. iota plus iota minus the tally. This is a tacit function. Uh, we can apply it and we can see that indeed it works. Um, let's see what the structure looks like. It is a fork where the right tine of the fork is itself a fork. We start off by subtracting the tally from the indices. Now, what is the tally? That's how many major cells there are in the argument. Now, a simple number is just one. So, this is a clever way of subtracting one from uh, the indices. So, let's try that. We have the indices and we're subtracting one and then we're using that as right argument for plus and the left argument is iota applied on the argument so the indices again 
Now, if we add these up, uh, then, well, you cannot probably see this already, that we get exactly what we wanted. And so the way we can write all this together is uh, the indices plus the indices minus the tally. And we can give this a name and apply it like that. And that's all for today. Thank you for following along.